Hi, it's Ruth and today I'm talking about morning routines. They're one of those success secrets that everyone seems to talk about, but what do you actually do? I'm going to be sharing my secrets today. So what I'd love you to do, if you, want, if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. It's all about strategy, mindset, success habits and confidence. So you can subscribe here. Morning routines are something that everyone seems to talk about. I remember when I first started on my personal development journey and I first got into the online world and everyone, Brand Brendan Bouchard, everyone that I came across was saying that the reason they were successful is because they had a great morning routine. At that time, I had a newborn baby and the thought of a morning routine filled me with dread. I was lucky if I got enough sleep. However, over time, I realised that if you start your day right, you're more likely to have a successful day. So morning routines don't start in the morning, they start the night before. You're not going to be leaping out of bed at 6 o'clock or 5.30 if you've gone to bed after midnight. So really consider how much sleep you want to get, and I would recommend between 7.5 and, and 8 hours, and then work backwards. What time does that mean that you go to bed? Because if you're anything like I used to be, you'd probably spend between about half nine and 12 o'clock, half 12, doing pretty much nothing except for sleeping. So get strict on your evening routine. Of course, that might have variations if you're on holiday, if you're doing different things. But if you start having that structure, you're more likely to follow it. So if you get enough sleep, you're going to be cognitively functioning better which means that you're going to come across as more intelligent. You're going to be able to do things more quickly, which is pretty much a win-win for all of us. So sleep is the first thing that you want to have in your arsenal of tools to be more productive and to and part of your morning routine. So imagine that you've got that in the bag, you're waking up, what do you do then? I personally really like the morning routine for Miracle Morning. So they say about something called savers, S-A-V-E-R-S, six things, and they say that you can do it in six minutes to an hour. And I like that because I don't really always have an hour. So my basic morning routine has that S, it has that silence. Now for me, that rarely includes meditation because if I've got up, I've gone downstairs, I'm out of my bedroom, which is a great thing to be, if I do meditation, I know that I'm likely to fall back to sleep. So instead, I like to sit in silence. We've got a lovely garden at the back of my house, so I just look into the garden. If it's sunny, I might even be in the garden. And A is then affirmations. Now, I personally write down my affirmations rather than say them, and I say them throughout the day. But having that reminder to do it is really important. V is visualization. So imagining where you really want to be. What's that big goal that you want to achieve? What's success gonna look like? When we imagine and we visualize every day for at least five minutes, I wouldn't recommend doing longer, you're more likely to get there because you're starting to reprogram your unconscious brain. After V, it's E, which is exercise. Now, sometimes my whole routine is getting up, getting in the car, driving to yoga class, and I do my silence there, I do my affirmations, I say, I say them to myself there, I do my visualisation while I'm, while, while I'm lying on the mat, and then I do my exercise. So sometimes those four go into my yoga class, and that's something that I love doing. It would be even better if I didn't have to drive to it, but I know that I work much better in a group setting. I get a vibe from the people in there. So do whatever exercise suits you. It could be running, it could be a HIIT training, it could be yoga, it could just be some stretching. It could be a walk outside. And then you've got R, which is reading. We all want to read more, but committing to reading something first thing in the morning gives your brain some food. So even if that's five chapters of a book, or it's something longer, depending on how much time you've got. And finally, S is scribbling or journaling. Have a look at your schedule for the day. 
I always do mine the day before, but I recheck it every morning and that helps me focus. Now, all of this is done without your mobile phone, without looking at your emails, without turning on the TV, with no distractions. Because when we have those distractions, when we have our emails or our phone or the TV, we start to be reactive. We start to react to things rather than being proactive. And this morning routine or any morning routine that works for you is about putting you in that frame of mind so you're proactive. You've planned for the day and you know what's coming. Of course, we can all be thrown curveballs, but having that structure and that routine in place helps you get stuff done and it helps you feel more in control. We can't control everything, but we can control what we do in those first 30 minutes of the day. Now, I want to share a couple of things that come up when people talk about routines. I've got my downloadable, which is gonna help you create a morning routine for you. Lots of people create barriers around routines. Now, lots of mums of kids say, this isn't gonna work for me because I have to get the kids out of the house, it's always quite rushed, and I don't want to do it then. You can do it later on in the day. Even in a miracle morning, they talk about having that morning time when it works for you, because it's that setting of the beginning of your day. So it might be that you do the silence, you do some stretching, you might have something like lemon water, which is a great way to start the day. Then you sort your kids out, then you come back and you do the exercise, you do maybe some meditation, you do your reading and you do your schedule for the day. So if you want to mix it up, that's completely fine. Like anything, find out what resonates with you. Test different things out. And you need to do this consistently for between 21 and 66 days for it to become a habit. It takes that long for our neural pathways to create habits. And the reason there's a difference is because as, as someone who's done a master's in psychology, I know there's massive individual differences. Some of us can change quite quickly, others it takes longer. So do it consistently, start small, start with one habit, one thing and build. Don't say I'm gonna do an elaborate morning routine every morning for 60 minutes every day and I've never done one before because you're going to fail. So start saying, okay, I'm going to make sure that I get up and have quiet time every morning for the next week. And when you've done that, do something else. I'd love to know what things work for you. Remember, we're all individuals and we all have different needs and different priorities. So I'd love you to share.